I think realistically we have to be prepared uh, here in Hawaii as well as across the country uh, if those arbitrary cuts occur. In 10 days, Hawaii could see 11,000 jobs vanish. Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard talks about the pressure to avoid the cuts. Also ahead, a country music star dead. The latest on what happened to 37-year-old Mindy McCready. She's the surgeon. Uh, she needs 5,000 rupees. And Diva's doing good in Sri Lanka on Mixed Plate. More local. KITV4 News at 10 starts now. Good evening. Gusty winds wreaking havoc all over the islands. Power outages, trees down, and kayakers in trouble. 4,300 HECO customers in Hawaii Kai lost power for four hours this morning. HECO says the outage was due to broken equipment on a transmission system. Power was out from Aina Haina to Waimanalo. Motorists had to deal with backed up traffic, and a lot of businesses closed their doors. I came over here to go to Starbucks, and now they're closed. <laughs> so I'm trying to find coffee. Please, somebody help me. <laughs> Power was restored at 1 p.m. Fixing the outage was delayed since crews struggled to get to high voltage lines. Off Monolua Bay tonight, three kayakers got into trouble because of the fierce winds. Bystanders called emergency services and rescue crews began a search for the lost kayakers. Witnesses said they saw the men struggling in the channel. Well, just getting out the channel here is it's going to be a challenge and but a lot of people look forward to doing the one-man run down here just because it is a challenge but i'm sure the next couple of days we'll have uh, more kayakers one-man canoes and kayaks and you know possibly needing assistance the search was called off when ocean safety said the kayakers made it to kaimana beach Firefighters responded to a blown roof near Wiley Street and Maoli Loa Place in Liliha tonight. This was one of four reported since yesterday, and there were also four reports of trees downed. One of those trees fell in the parking lot of Long's Drugs and Safeway, fronting Pulley Highway. The large tree came down on top of three vehicles. Fortunately, no one was injured. On Kauai, a 54-year-old Kalaheo woman was injured last night when a tree fell on her at Kukui Lono golf course parking area in Kalaheo. She's being treated at Wilcox Hospital. And back on Oahu, traffic near the Keahi Marine Center on Sand Island Access Road is contraflowed while HECO repairs a leaning power pole. One lane of the road is open, but motorists and pedestrians are urged to avoid the area. There are no reports of a power outage. HECO says crews will be working overnight to replace that pole. On the Big Island, old Mamalahoa Highway in Ahualoa now open after high winds knocked down power lines yesterday. A hundred customers were without power until one o'clock this morning. And the strong winds hampered a rescue effort on Diamond Head Trail this morning. The injured hiker had to be carried down on a gurney. Fire officials could not send up a helicopter to airlift the man. Witnesses said he was conscious and did not seem to have life-threatening injuries. Just when is all of this going to end, Justin? It's windy weather, Pam. Ain't going anywhere anytime soon. However, trade wind speeds are probably at their peak strength right now. Top wind gusts today up near 60 miles per hour in some of the windiest areas like the mountains of Kauai around Kahuku and Kaena Point on Oahu, also near Lanai City, along with the Hamakua and South Kohala districts of the Big Island, also around South Point. Statewide wind advisory now up until at least 6 p.m. tomorrow. Wind speeds should drop off just a hair beginning tomorrow night. Some wet weather heading our way. We'll have complete details coming up a little bit later. Pam? Thank you, Justin. Hawaii could lose 11,000 jobs and 18,000 civilians could be furloughed if Congress and the president don't reach a deal on across-the-board budget cuts by March 1st. Tonight, Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard says the state should brace itself. At Punchbowl, Gabbard led a Veterans Affairs delegation looking into spending on cemeteries, health care and veterans benefits. The Congresswoman says she's pushing hard to make sure the March 1st deadline is met. The $85 billion automatic cut is referred to as sequestration, a uniform percentage reduction in the face of a budget deficit. One thing that I think everyone agrees on is that we must cut back and we have to do things smarter and more efficiently. 
Two million federal workers, including 18,000 here, could be furloughed, many for up to 22 days this fiscal year. The kinds of arbitrary cuts that will come about uh, if sequestration occurs uh, will hurt uh, not only the civilian jobs here in Hawaii, uh, but also many of the different programs that are helping and serving uh, Hawaii's kids and Hawaii's families. Gabbard and the delegates from the Veterans Affairs say sequestration will not affect spending on veterans. We worked very hard to make sure that the administration understood uh, that the law clearly states uh, that veteran benefits and health care should be uh, exempt from sequester, uh, and so they're not going to be affected. Gabbard will be participating in tomorrow's Great Aloha Run, and then it's off to the neighbor islands to meet with constituents. And tomorrow, Senator Maisie Hirono will be live on KITV4 News this morning. There will also be live reports from the Great Aloha Run. 22,000 and counting, that's the latest roster of participants in tomorrow's Great Aloha Run. Now in its 29th year, the eight mile run raises millions for charity. Now today's Great Aloha Run Expo was the last chance to pick up race packets and get some last minute prep work. This year, the number of military participants is down, but the number of visitors is up. What's unique about this year is that we have a lot more um, foreign visitors. Um, of course, our mainstay is 90% local, which is what we live off of, and we're thankful for that. The race begins at 7 a.m. at Aloha Tower and ends at Aloha Stadium. Live race coverage begins on KITV4 News this morning at 5 a.m. Coming up, a country music superstar dead tonight at the age of 37. Plus, call them miracle workers, philanthropists, changing lives across the ocean. Diva's doing good. Next. You're watching Pamela Young, Chief Meteorologist Justin Fujioka, and Sports with Jemai Webster. This is KITV 4 News at 10. I'm still here after the heartache. Police in Arkansas have found the body of country music star Mindy McCready dead of an apparent suicide. 911 callers say they heard gunshots at her home. The troubled singer struggled with addiction and mental illness. She burst onto the music scene in 1996 with her debut album, 10,000 Angels, and the hit, Guys Do It All The Time. McCready leaves behind two young boys, one of them 10 months old. The infant's father, record producer David Wilson, killed himself last month. Yesterday, you met Deepa's Doing Good, a group of Hawaii business owners who have adopted a village in Sri Lanka. On tonight's Mixed Plate, the Divas rescue a family. The wisdom of ancestors is not to be doubted. So for centuries, the people of Nalathanya have built their daily lives around the tenets of tradition. But that wisdom does not always address the problems of their changing world. Pollution, encroaching urbanism, unemployment and disease. She's seven years old. She has cancer. What kind of cancer? Uh, that I don't think the mother knows. The parents don't even really know like what that the kids are ill or what the illness is and how to correct it. So, um, you know, definitely kind of heartbreaking to see that. Joselima cooks three meals in her kitchen, which instantly fills with smoke whenever the kindling is lit. With no ventilation, she spends nearly all her day enveloped in fumes. The Nalathanya diet is heavy on the roti and is light, too light, on iodine, the element found in seafood. Inland villagers show a high prevalence of goiter, swollen thyroid glands, and Joselima's condition is among the worst. So it's a growth from the inside. Sometimes it's difficult for her to eat. Doctors in the city say Joselima must have surgery before her goiter cuts off her trachea and esophagus. But to see the surgeon, uh, she needs 5,000 rupees. Which husband, Tibi Yapanan, the village pastor, has no hope of ever raising in his lifetime. Then you could see all the emotion just open like floodgates. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, I can't live without her. I can't, especially because we're in the wedding industry, seeing how their love was so great. Mm -hmm. Although the divas have vowed to address only community problems, sometimes you just got to break the rules. The way they talked about it, it just seemed like it was so hopeless. But when you do the math, it's $430. So we discussed last night your condition. And we decided that together we want 
to give you the money you need for your condition. Because together you are very strong. And we need you to be strong for the entire community. Nobody held him for such, for such a long time. I tell you, that was really a real moment in my heart that I will never forget. Giving that person life again. Things transcend time, distance, and language, the need to connect, the need to find purpose. For this, ancestral wisdom does have an explanation. Buddha says, set your heart on doing good, do it over and over again, and you will be filled with joy. That's Mixed Plate. Shortly after the divas returned home, they got word that Joselima had her surgery. And as you can see, she is goiter-free and completely well. If you want to get involved, go to our link in the As Seen On section of our website, KITV.com. Coming up, the Bone Marrow Donor Registry looking for younger donors. And Houston, we have liftoff later in KITP4 Sports highlights from the NBA All-Star Game in Texas. New information tonight in the murder of 32-year-old Fa'afatea Few, who was shot multiple times in the Hilo Bayfront area in December. Few's widow says her child may have been an eyewitness to the murder, according to the Hawaii Tribune Herald, which claims that court documents show the child woke up when he heard gunshots and that a fisherman had killed his father. Police charged 55-year-old Mark Anthony Wine with second-degree murder. He is scheduled to appear in court on March 12th. The first step to recovery for many blood cancer patients is a bone marrow transplant. KITV4's Jill Kuramoto has news of significant changes in the donor registry. A simple swab of your cheek and a signature of approval, and you're registered with the bone marrow registry. Some 80,000 people in Hawaii have already signed up to be a possible donor, and the registry is always looking for more. It's just now they're being more selective. You're going to do to 10 seconds in the four quadrants. As of October 1st, the National Be The Match Registry has changed its policy to recruit only 18 to 44 year olds in good general health. But because of the need of the patients, that they find that the younger the donor, the healthier the marrow, the healthier the stem cells, that's better, better option for the patient. Better options lead to more successful transplants. That's not to say if you're 45, you're out of the registry. You're in the registry till you're 60, but the chance of you being called is, is very slim. Roy Yonashiro says while college is the best place to find the age group they're looking for, it's much more challenging. But they've got a lot of things on their mind, you know, graduation, uh, future occupations. Lisa Keel knows the importance of her commitment. That's always the encouraging story that, you know, by signing up that maybe I'll be able to save somebody's life. The registry is also in critical need of more Asian Pacific Islanders. We have a lot of patients uh, in Hawaii right now who are urgently trying to find a donor, and uh, because they're Hawaiian or part Hawaiian, they can't find they can't find a donor. Might possibly consider being bone marrow donors. The good news: Kapiolani Medical Center is now doing bone marrow transplants after Hawaii Medical Center closed, allowing patients to stay home who need the life-saving help. Jill Kuramoto, KITV4 News. A state bill that allows bone marrow donors to take a leave of absence from work is making its way through the legislature this year. On Molokai, a 14-year-old project of the Nature Conservancy and Molokai Land Trust have the Mo'omomi sand dunes blooming again. The removal of Kiabe thickets cleared the way for the new growth and also boosted the island's wedgetail shearwater population. On Oahu, the sixth annual International Aloha Koi Show attracted hundreds to the Waikiki Aquarium. Top quality koi were on display and for sale. Awards were given to the cream of the carp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Sorry about that. A lot of people were hoping this three-day weekend would be an outdoors one. It, it is, as far as uh, the rain situation. It yeah. could be worse, but the wind, yeah. But as worse as it can be, right? Yeah. Uh, as far as uh, live look outside right now, you can see it's still a little bit windy in some spots. Typically, the wind speeds uh, drop off just a bit in the overnight time period. That's because the sun fuels our wind. So once the sun comes back up tomorrow, brace yourself, folks. We'll have a complete forecast when we come back. And now, KI.
ITV4 weather. Our very strong trade winds bringing some scattered clouds and showers into our islands here from the east. And you can see most of those uh, clouds and showers favoring uh, the islands of Maui County as well as the Big Island. We'll zoom out here just a bit, show you that there's nothing really all that organized upwind in the trade wind flow. But our cloud and rain forecast is showing most of the shower activity focused again around East Maui, Hilo side of the Big Island here as we work our way through President's Day tomorrow. Uh, as well as Tuesday. It looks like that's going to hang on to be the situation here for the next several days. Just slightly wetter than normal trade wind weather uh, in store for us. Now, as far as the wind situation, uh, far from normal. Very strong trade winds all week long, thanks to high pressure, clockwise rotation. Uh, and that's going to continue pretty much all week long with the strongest winds uh, due in here for tomorrow. And then again, maybe on Friday. Look at those wind speeds right now sustained up to 28 miles per hour in Lanai City. Gusts as high as 40 to 50 miles per hour. 66 right now in Wahiawa as well as Lanai City. 70 in Hilo. Here in Honolulu, we're at uh, 73 degrees. Relative humidity, 59%. Winds trade out of the northeast at 21 miles per hour. And those strong trades have kicked up high surf advisories for the east-facing shores of most islands. And we've got a large northwest swell, and that's why we have high surf advisories up for the north and west shores of several islands. Surf up to 24 foot faces north, 18 foot faces west, and 10 for our east facing shores. That northwest swell should drop a notch for tomorrow, 10 to 18 north, 8 to 12 wrap out on the west side. Moderate northwest swell Thursday, Friday. And mariners, gale warnings up for waters around Maui County and the Big Island. Small craft advisories everywhere else because of that large northwest swell, which will be declining throughout the day tomorrow. And again, those very strong trade winds at 20 to 35 miles per hour sustained gusts up near 50, maybe even 60 miles per hour. Once again, in some of those windiest locations of Maui County as well as the Big Island. Don't forget, folks, statewide wind advisory in effect until 6 p.m. tomorrow. For those of you in the great Aloha run, at least you'll be running with the wind and not against the wind. 80 uh, our noontime temperature in Honolulu for tomorrow. And it looks like that wind ever so slightly backing off Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, ramping right back up on Friday. Friday, Saturday, by the way, could feature uh, wet trade wind weather. So watch out for that. Things could change, though, as we head into next weekend. So at least the rain mm -hmm. not going to be a factor for the Great Aloha Run. And the, the winds the wind. might even improve their times. Yeah, exactly. With the wind, <laughs> running with the wind. Thanks, Justin. <laughs> Time now to go to Jemai and see what's coming up in sports. Three in the books in the Rainbow Season opening series with Oregon, how they ended up on the wrong side of 16 hits. Plus, records come down in Vegas, but first, Danica Patrick becoming the first ever female to secure top spot for a Sprint Cup race, taking the pole at the Daytona 500, our play of the night. This is going to be a whale of a lap. But I think that Sprint Cup Series most popular driver award with Dale Earnhardt Jr. pretty much has been a lot for the last few years. Patrick started on the pole for the nationwide race here last year. And the Danica Patrick has made NASCAR history. And now, KITV4 Sports. Welcome to sports. Jemai Webster here with you. The UH baseball team dropped to sixth ranked Oregon today in game three of their four game series with the Ducks after a late rally fell short for the second game in a row. Little gusty, but a beautiful day for the rest of this first Sunday ball game of the season. Rainbows jumped on top of Oregon to start. That's P.E. Keita Moore nailing one of his two hits on the afternoon, going into right center. That scored Kale Hanawahine. He came all the way around from second base. Bowles would be hampered by two errors in the fifth inning, loaded the bases at one point, then Ryan Healy smoked this RBI singles, giving U of O the 3-1 advantage. Healy hit four for five with three RBI on a solo home run. Bowles found their way back in it in the seventh, trailing 5-2 now. LJ Brewster pinch hitting for Kael Aliviato, getting the home team bounce. That scored one of two runs for Hawaii in the inning to cut Oregon's lead back to two. Ducks just had it working for them. They scored nine runs on 16 hits. That's Scott Heenemann killing the baseball for an RBI double. Ducks scored three in the eighth for their third straight W. 9-5 Oregon final, Connor Little. Took the loss for UH, going six and a third, giving up four earned runs with three strikeouts. Rainbows fall to 0-3. Series wraps tomorrow. First pitch scheduled for 105. Final day of the Desert Classic Tournament in Las Vegas. Rainbow Wahine outfielder Charlotte Klebenstein blasting her third home run of the tournament. Hawaii got past Utah Valley in game one of the doubleheader 3-1. 
Jessica Iwata hit two for four with that RBI. Kelly Majin broke the UH career record for runs scored to bring her career total to 188 today, breaking Tia Moran's mark set back in 1998. Ladies split on the final day, dropping to Nevada in their afternoon matchup 11 to nine. They fall to eight and four in 2013. They return home now to host Memphis on next Wednesday. Laura Beeman and her Rainbow Wahine basketball team claimed to share a first place in the Big West Conference last night, holding down home court, defeating Pacific 74-71 in overtime. Ladies look to have a legit shot at winning the conference title since Vince Gu retired as head man in 2004. Tigers scored the game's first eight points and were led by 22 from Gina Johnson. Hawaii rallied to close the first half to lead by a point. Camila Martin posted her 10th double-double with 16 and 12 rebounds. Freshman Ashley Karaitiana put in 11, including the eventual game-winning three ball with 14 seconds remaining. Coach Beeman and her girls are just enjoying this ride. Did you think at the beginning of the season, this late into the season, your team would be where they're at? I didn't think about it. Um, am I surprised? No, I'm not. We just have to sustain this now. But I didn't stop to think about it because that's not what you think about when you're trying to take small steps. So our goal is one game at a time. This one took us 45 minutes, but we'll take it. 13 and 11 Hawaii tied with Pacific as the first place team in the BWC at 9 and 4. Ladies trek to California coast this week to play UC Santa Barbara. Gauchos are fourth in the conference at 11 and 13 overall, 7 and 5 in Big West play. Tip off is set for 5 o'clock. Sticking with the theme of ladies on the hardwood, that's Konawaina graduate, three time Pac 12 freshman of the week, Leah Galdera. She and her Washington State Cougars had a tough time with Oregon today. Two freshmen able to poke away the steel, go coast to coast for two quick ones. Wazoo trail 28 15 at the half. Here's Galdera hitting her old high school teammate Danielle Awa for only two points of the game. Cougs outscored the Ducks 45 37 in the second half. Big Island girls coming up short 65 60. Galdera's finished with a team leading 19, but it came on 8 of 26 shooting. NBA All-Star Weekend in Houston, Texas concluded tonight with the best players in the Eastern Conference facing off against the top guys in the West. Defense, always optional in these affairs. Hoops always brings out Hollywood's and music's elite. J&B enjoying the festivities. East with three Miami Heat starters, Chris Bosh, Dwayne Wade, and LeBron. LeBron James throwing down the thunderous one-handed jam. Wouldn't be an All-Star game, though, without a little Lob City. Blake Griffin soaring to end up on the other side of this oop from his teammate Chris Paul. And just appreciate this right here, folks. Kevin Durant going to the rack. Yikes. He scored 30, but most of his feeds came from CP3. Rocking Joe Kim Noah to sleep. Paul became the first LA Clipper to be All-Star Game MVP. 20 points, 15 assists. West wins 143-138. PGA Tour stopped off in Pacific Palisades, California this week. Final round of the Northern Trust Open. After forcing a playoff on the 72nd hole of the tournament, John Merrick went on to defeat Charlie Beljohn on the second playoff hole for his first ever PGA Tour victory. Earns a spot in the Masters in April and nearly a cool $1.2 million. Isn't it amazing how the paychecks have gotten so, so big <laughs> in golf? Looks like we're in the wrong profession. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Raise your kid to be a golfer. I knew that a long time ago, Jemai. <laughs> Just for the love of it, though. Right. Just for the love, that's all. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Jemai. We're going to leave you tonight with hot rods and hot rides from this afternoon's Wegfest Car Show at Ward Center. Have a good evening. Have a great week. Have a good week.